This part of the sermon is not written down because this comes from my heart. It seems to me that Deborah Jackson was probably the most remarkable person who has presided over the First Baptist Church in Needham in the past 100 years. She was quite possibly the best senior pastor we have ever had. And I want to be the first to say on this podium that you made us all better people, Pastor Deborah. And I thank you and God bless you. You will be in my heart forever. Woo! Praise the Lord, church. This is a hard day for everybody. I am passionate about the Morrow home, which is in Muskogee, Oklahoma. It's a place that I first went to in 2009, and I've been back four times. When I speak about it, I think my heart just lifts to the heavens because of the children that I've met there, that the people that I've tried to help, and it's just a wonderful place. And I hope to share something about my most recent trip there. I'm not an ordained minister. I'm not even a divinity student. But I can tell you that I can give my testimony on what I have done for God's church. As a gardener, I cherish the color, fragrance, and beauty that flowers bring to a well-kept garden. In my mind's eye, I see a rampant clematis plant tumbling over a trellis covering a border, the pink flowers echoing the patio's terracotta color. And in my vision, lavender and shades of blue sweetens the long summer days. They all seem like old friends. And any gardener would care for them as if they were their own children. One spring, not so long ago, I went out to sow some seed. Most gardeners know that young seedlings want loom that is moist, mellow, and damp. Unknown to me, my seed fell on a rocky place where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the Lord made the sunshine, the ground became hard and my plant withered because it had no root. Of course, I was very disappointed. Wounded and broken, Feelings of gloom and despair and hopelessness engulfed me. I had worked so hard to promote my plant's growth in a loving way. I did my best to give the support it needed, but it was to no avail. I lost my resilience and sank into a depressing sadness. I think you know that I am talking about Julie Sizemore, our first goddaughter at Morrow Indians Children's Home in Oklahoma. Sometimes we hesitate to do good because we don't see any results. But if we maintain a heavenly perspective, we will understand that we often will not see the good that results from our efforts. If we truly believe that Christ has won the ultimate victory because of his resurrection, that fact must affect the way we live right now. And nothing, nothing we do is done in vain. Don't allow discouragement over an apparent lack of results keep you from doing God's work. Do the good that you have the opportunity to do. Let Jesus be your cheerleader. 
no matter how great our misfortunes, we have it in us to create a new beginning. Because Christ lives in us as believers, we can remain courageous and hopeful. This re means that, this reveals that we can remain, that our faith is real. Ask God for more knowledge, patience, wisdom, love, and understanding. He will give it to you. If God calls you to a task, determined to complete it, even if you face discouragement, the rewards will be worth the effort. Julie was shy at first. When we walked towards each other on the walkway in front of Carlisle Cottage, there was a look of hesitation about her as she faced someone new. Reaching her, I gave her a big hug. Julie was rigid and said nothing. To fill the void, I said something like, well, show a little enthusiasm, Julie. I've come a long way to see you. Her best friend, Jasmine, had just guided me from the office to find Julie. We had been exchanging letters for eight weeks, mine being more frequent than her replies. Searching for an icebreaker, I reached for my new digital, digital camera. You know, I read the owner's manual on the plane coming down here, but I still can't get the hang of using this. The girl's eyes widened, and Jasmine said, Oh, we can show you. Come on, Julie, pose for me. I pretended to take instruction from Jasmine while Julie posed for candid photographs. Then it was Julie's turn to take snapshots while Jasmine was the subject. Their pictures are keepsakes and the first of many memorable moments. Persistence is the byproduct of a truly devoted life. It does us much to change our hearts and minds, and it helps us to understand and express the intensity of our need. It is an expression of our faith that God answers our prayers. God is always present, always listening, always answering in ways that he knows are best. Don't give up. Have determination. The goal is worthy of your devotion. Let us pray together. Dear God, we know that your goddaughter and your daughter, Julie Brown, is of high value to you. Your love for Julie is so great that the kingdom of God belongs to such as her. And so we praise you, Lord, for all you do. O oh God, we ask you to strengthen Julie, to help her grow, to protect her, and to help Julie please you, Lord. God, help Julie make good decisions and guide her along the right path. And Lord, we also ask the strength yours for your strength and guidance as we try to share the love of Christ with Julie. We ask that you help us, Lord, keep Julie in our hearts and prayers this day. For God uses anyone of any age who is willing to yield to him, to Jesus. You made it clear to us. Lord, give us the patience to be God parents and mentors to Julie in a Christ-honoring manner. 
Help us to act in love, giving great support in all possible ways, and treating Julie as Jesus treats the people he loves. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen. By Saturday's benefit powwow, Julia was comfortable being with me and easily engaged in conversation. And I was, and was openly relaxed when relating to me. I do not know what lies just beneath the surface. No doubt, Julie has special needs that are unknown to me. My goal was to get as much face-to-face -face time with our goddaughter as possible in order to form a bond between us. Everything else was of secondary importance. There is a promise of a prize, a promise God will keep. God thinks with exceptional clarity. His vivacity of imagination and poetry of divine fire is inspirational. God can give us new hearts, new desires, and new spirits if we persist in our belief. God can help us save this child. Maro Indian Children's Home Benefit Pow Wow on June 30th was the big opening event. The Maro children were able to learn from their tribal elders about their Native American culture, and I was a learner as well. These events are fascinating community gatherings and family reunions that have a great tradition behind them, and it was an honor for me to view the proceedings. In a powwow, there is something called a host drum where eight to 12 men encircle a large drum and continuously beat out a rhythm. The drummers chant during the dances and are led by a head singer. Head man and head woman dancers are entitled to start each set of songs. Participants must wait until they have started to dance before join, joining in. A master of ceremonies announces who is to dance and when. Everyone dances around the drummers in a clockwise direction wearing traditional Native American costumes. Some dance steps are a lot like walking, but others are fancy and specific according to dance type and purpose. Some are judged competitions. There are honor songs where you must respectfully stand quietly in place until the sponsors of the song have danced a complete circle or until the song is over if you are not dancing. Some songs require that you dance only if you are familiar with the routine or are eligible to participate. These girls were not eligible. Supper was served at 5 p.m. and I did my humble best when being one of the food servers uh, to do a good job feeding the generous people attending, whether they were Native Americans or not. The Anderson Cottage girls and I did various activities at Marl or locally in Muskogee with a staff accompaniment. Julie is being kept under close uh, and short reign because she has run away twice. Uh, she's doing better now. But now she seems to finally understand that Marl is the best place for her. I try to just listen, let things unfold, 
and told stories from my own life experience that might be helpful without trying to offer any unsolicited solutions to her problems. I was visiting Anderson Cottage on July 2nd when the girls went into their rooms for a long time. None of the adults knew what was happening, which was very strange. When they finally came out, everyone was dressed up to have their picture taken. And it sort of reminded me like that program on television called America's Next Top Model, except these kids were between the ages of seven and 11. These are some of the pictures. For well, Fourth of July, I held a pancake breakfast for 17 Maru children serving authentic Vermont maple syrup, of course. Uh, and on another day, we had a pickup game of Monopoly, ate lunch together in Anderson Cottage, and went swimming at the small Spalding Park pool. For me, this trip tomorrow, for, for this trip tomorrow, I brought snapshots from home so that Julie could see what it is like in other places. Oklahoma and Texas have been her world so far. Julie liked the photos I took of waves smashing against rocks along the coast in Agunquit, Maine. She also liked photos I took in the White Mountain National Forest in New Hampshire, as well as this one of a five-foot alligator floating in a lake in sunny Florida. I, sent, uh, I spent four evenings at Walgreens busily uh, making prints from my SD memory cards and scanning photos. Julie kept those photos. I also taught Julie how to use my digital camera, letting her take pictures of uh, whomever she wanted by allowing Julie to operate the camera uh, under my close supervision, I believe that she learned something important about trusting, about trust and the responsibility that comes with granted privilege. Spiritual gardeners need to be patient, taking every opportunity to tell others the truth about God. Embolden yourself by staying in fellowship with other Christians. Talk daily about your mutual faith. Be aware of the deceitfulness of sin. Encourage each other and love with love and concern. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Saturday, July 7th was a very big day, though I couldn't have guessed it when my bedside alarm rang. In the morning, everyone from Anderson College, Cottage and Miss Margaret, their house mom, and I drove over to the, uh, in the new van, uh, to McDonald's for cold drinks and an hour of fun time in the restaurant's playroom, which uh, was my first cup of coffee in a week. If you haven't been to Mickey D's lately, and when I first went there, I didn't even know what Mickey D's was. <laughs> it's not a term familiar with me. Many of these restaurants are equipped with play equipment that is kept in separate rooms geared towards kids who are less than four feet tall. As a matter of fact, there's a, a little measuring stick that comes up to four feet, and if you're taller than that, you don't get in. 
Soda refills are free, and Julie got me hooked on her favorite mocha frappe frozen ice drinks. After lunch, uh, the same group went down on a fun shopping trip to Arrowhead Mall, which is anchored by Sears, and a store called Dillard's. If you've been to Denver, you know of it. Uh, I used what I will call a missions ministry voucher to buy Julie a pair of new shoes she liked and a backpack, both for the coming school year. But there's a store at this mall called Earthbound that had lots of cool and unusual things. Julie spotted a shoulder bag in a very intricate golden pattern with sequins and silk stripes, which had a price tag of $24.95. And she just had to have this. But she had already spent her day's allowance. Much more than that, as a matter of fact. Then Miss Margaret noticed that the store was having a sale. Buy one item and get any other item in the store of equal or lesser value for free. So we browsed the store one more time with that in mind. Julie decided by herself that she was going to find something in that store that Mr. Andrew would like. Not thinking about herself was a big step for Julie, according to Miss Margaret. Meanwhile, I found a singing bowl, like those originally used in, by uh, Buddhist monks for meditation purposes. Some of you may have heard of these. And I said, Julie, look at this. There's a picture of a singing bowl. It's made of brass, and it comes with a, a stick. Well, many of them are larger than that, and there is a way to play it. I said to Julie, it's a singing bowl that would fit an empty spot in my bell collection. This is great. Let's buy it, and you can have that pretty shoulder bag as the store's free extra item. But after purchasing it, I thought to myself, this piece of solid brass ought to show up wonderfully on the x-ray machine when I go through airport security in Tulsa. And when I'm thinking about it now, I think I was frisked <laughs> on this one occasion. Julie told me at about 4 p.m. on Saturday, this has been the very best day ever. You are the best, Mr. Andrew. Her saying that made the whole missions trip worthwhile. I have the bowl here. Pastor Deborah wants me to, to play it. Should I play it now or later? Now? Okay, we may have to boost the volume on this. This is known, uh, this is a uh, prayer bead. It's called a, a malice. Uh, you actually start at one point at the large bead and you, you count your, if you were praying in Sanskrit, Sanskrit, you would count each bead for each prayer that you say. But this is the bowl. It's very heavy. This is a small one. And if I can do this, if the mic will pick it up, you hold it in your left hand. It's sort of like playing um, the bells we have in the music room. It's
I will get better than this, than that later. <laughs> Getting back to the scripture, where it says, Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. I feel that perhaps with Julia, we may be headed in that direction. I hope so. But the day was not over yet. Kaya, one of the girls who is now home with her mother, turns 14 on tomorrow, July 8th. Birthday party! Let's not wait. I bought a sheet cake at Walmart's. Where else? If you go to Muscovy, you shop at Walmart's. John knows. The order was for a white cake with low-fat purple frosting. Purple is Kaya's favorite color. And the controlled chaos started at 8 p.m. on Saturday night. Have you seen the black shoe polish that football players smear below their eyes? Now imagine that same look done this way. Purple frosting. And then add purple mustaches and purple makeup. And now add purple hair highlights. And I think one of my polo shirts had a purple handprint on the back of it. We won't leave that on. <laughs> and the grape soda froze in its two liter plastic bottle. So Miss Margaret sliced it open with a serrated knife and extracted the purple ice grape soda with an ice cream scoop. I said, is this party over now? No way, we're just starting. That was that other picture. I can't go backwards. And then the girls got out their multicolored lighted disco ball and put on a dance demonstration. Their dances had no recognizable sequences, but nobody cared. We had a lot of fun. Sort of like dancing with the stars, Oklahoma style. While in Oklahoma, I attended church services at Van Lake Baptist Church. Uh, on the left is Pastor Dale Carey, who is the pastor, senior pastor there. The children sang a praise song for the congregation to such applause that you wouldn't, you would just be blessed. I took my turn performing a solo without accompaniment. There is no piano player there. When we were leaving, I noticed Julia was proudly wearing her new shoulder bag with its intricate golden with sequin and silk stripes, her new prize possession. At 8.15 on the final morning, I went to Anderson Cottage to say goodbye to a bleary-eyed Julie. She seemed distant, perhaps realizing that I was really leaving. I wondered how life must be for children who do not have enduring parental or guardian attachments and who have suffered abandonment or abuse. Surely, surely, children are God's most treasured people. The Lord's wrath is truly upon those who fall and fail to be good stewards of these children. Sometimes 
when you lose someone who is close in your heart. And this phrase came up in my mind this morning. Sometimes when you lose someone who is close in your heart, it is only God making room in your heart for someone of far greater purpose. Sometimes God knows someone new who knew, needs your love's goodness more than you could ever imagine. Because God has a plan for each of us, and only he understands what his plan is. I truly believe these things, because it has been my testimony at Morrow Home apparently losing a 16-year-old goddaughter to society's problems while gaining a more precious opportunity to help mold a second at-risk child who is valued by God and by his servants. If you don't know it, and this is not on the page, love every person care for their needs, embrace the lost, and give mercy every day. Treat all persons as though they are Jesus. This has been a missions trip where there was just me and Julie caught in a moment. A simple slice of time where one human being met another and there was a momentary bubble. That moment when once strangers learned that they were the same in spite of everything. That they were sponsor and goddaughter, brother and sister, with stories to tell that they could pass a few minutes or even hours in one another's company and both be the better for it. Then Jesus said, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Consider carefully what you do here. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and even more. Mark chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. Here is my prayer for all believers who feel an unctuous call to mission, those who feel compelled to go even though their church's focus is elsewhere. God, we know that there are still those who are yet lost. As your servants, help us to persevere. Missionary service is a desert. The soil is hard and dry until you work the ground and add your waters of love and caring. From thorn bushes grow beautiful white flowers when we receive God's great and all-powerful help. We shall continue to do your will, O Lord. God, save Julie Brown. Keep Julie safe and grant her peace and hope. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Keep us in your prayers tonight, Julie Brown. And I think Pastor Deborah is going to say something here.